Okay, so um, this is a second lecture, part B on chapter uh, 19. My last one went a little bit long, so I'll probably won't do all of part B. Let's talk about <coughs> me, earnings per share, talk about how that changes if I issue stock, um, if I have stock dividends or splits, and if I reacquire shares. So um, the simplest thing, you know, just to know what earnings per share is, is it's exactly what it sounds like. How much money did I make? Um, for every share of stock that I had outstanding. Now, this if I have no stock transactions during the year, this is really simple. Look on page 1107, you see this company had an income of $154 million and all it had was 60 million shares outstanding. So I simply take the net income divided by shares outstanding. Um, and that really is all EPS is, all earnings per share is. How much money did I make for every share? So for every share that someone owned, this company made $2.57. Now, where this gets more complicated is what happens if I split my shares? What happens if I get stock dividends? What happens if I reacquire shares? What happens if I issue new shares? Um, but all that really is going to entail, mostly for this part of the chapter, is just adjusting based on how long the shares were outstanding. So if I had 60 million to begin with and I put some more out there, unless it was on January 1st, I need to adjust for the time frame that they were actually out there. Um, but that's effectively what kind of the rest of this first part of the chapter talks about. So bottom of 1107, it says, same company, Sovereign Financial Corporation, reported net income of $154 million. Its, its capital structure includes the following. $60 million, $60 million common shares were outstanding on January 1st. And on March 1st, 12 million new shares were sold. Okay, so the issue is, is yes, there's a total of 72 million shares, but the 72 million shares were not outstanding for the entire year. Instead, the 60 million works, that's what January 1st had. And so January 1 through December 31st, the 60 million shares were all outstanding. But the 12 million were not issued till March 1st. So that means I have January and February where they were not outstanding. So to adjust for that time frame, I'm time waiting it effectively. And you take those 12 million shares times 10 twelfths um, and use that as my share number instead of the instead of just using the 12 million, I need to adjust it for the fact that it was not outstanding the whole time. So now you see that I have 154 million divided by 70 um, to get a $2.20 set. Uh, basic earnings per share. Um, so that's what issuing new shares does. So we got basic and we got issuing new shares. Now what happens if there's a um, stock dividends? Okay, so we're just taking this and just adding things basically. Um, so what happens if there's a stock dividend? Well, stock dividend um, needs to adjust everything because a stock dividend is usually based on the number of shares outstanding at the time. Um, so effectively, a stock dividend should it should increase the number of shares uh, based on how long they were outstanding. So example on 1108, um, the shares outstanding prior to the stock dividend are retroactively restated to reflect the 10% increase that is treated as if they're distributing distributed occurring at the beginning of the period. So in this one, same net income, 154 million, I have my 60 million shares outstanding, I still got my new 12 million shares, but then on June 17th, 10% uh, stock dividend was distributed. Um, so all I need to do is multiply each of those numbers respectively by 1.1 because a 10% stock dividend means effectively for every uh, it's every one stock, it's be tough because you're talking about partial stocks. So for every 100 shares of stock you had, you'd get another 10. So that 60 million is going to really become 66 million and that 12 times 10 twelfths, which is 10, is going to become 11. So that's where the 66 plus 11 gives me the 77 for my bottom number. But do notice that I, I do effectively show it retroactively. So even things that were January 1st, even though the dividend didn't happen until, until, um, until uh, June of 2017. Um, okay, so that, that makes sense. So that's a, the shares outstanding prior to. So that's stock dividends. Uh, what happens if we have a, if we reacquire shares, so if we buy shares back? Same kind of thing, it might, matter of fact, exactly the same as issuing your shares, except for instead of adding, I'm subtracting. So, oh, again, over on 1109, illustration 19-8, it says we've got the same income, same January 1st, we've got the same shares being sold, we got the 10% stock dividend, so all that say the same, but now it says on October 1st, 8 million shares were reacquired as treasury stock. Okay, well, those were not taken out of circulation until October 1st, which means eight months of the year they were outstanding. So they should be counted for eight months of the year, but not counted for the last three. So since I'm subtracting, 
this number. Notice it's the only one we're subtracting so far. I need to subtract 8 million shares times the time frame that they were not outstanding because this is a negative number. So 8 times 3 twelfths in this case, which gives me 75 um, uh, shares on weighted time weighted average uh, outstanding throughout the year to give me my EPS of $2.05 now. And then the last one, um, preferred preferred dividends. Preferred dividends are, are subtracted from net income so that earnings is, the EPS is figured based on earnings available to common shareholders. Preferred shareholders and common shareholders are separated out. So I subtract preferred dividends because I want to show what the common shareholders had available to them, how much did the common shareholders earn, and just kind of remove um, anything having to do, well, not anything having to do, but any dividends having to do with preferred stock. Um, so again, everything is still the same. Um, bottom number is still the same. Now, this is the first time we take something out off of the top number. We subtract our preferred dividends, in this case, uh, four, and that number is figured based on the 8% times the $10 par times the 5 million shares. That's really 4 million is what that number is. I subtract that from the net income to again, find my new earnings per share, in this case, $2. So we've got a couple of problems we can look at. I'll look at basic exercise 1912 and 1913 on page 1137. So 1912 says, McDonald Meyer Corporation recorded net income of 741 million. I got that, these are all in millions. The company had 544 million common shares outstanding at January 1st, and they sold 36 million shares as part of the annual share repurchase plan. Um, Six million shares were retired on April 30th for $47 per share. Calculate the earnings per share for the year. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make my adjustment here. So I wanna know, this is shares sold on 228, so I wanna know what percentage of the year they were outstanding. Well, two months they weren't and 10 months they were, so this is my 10. Twelfths. So after my adjustment, this number, and I'm just kind of doing it outside of the formula, but this is my, this should be, this should be dollars, but it should be as common as my dollars. But effectively, the weighted average of this 36 million shares that I sold is really 30 million because it was only outstanding for 10 twelfths of the year. Now, since these are retired shares, these are different. I want to know um, how long I'm subtracting this number, so I want to know how long these shares were not outstanding. Well, January, February, March, April, all of April's four months, so that means eight months they were outstanding, so equals eight twelfths. I'm going to take that number times that number to get four. So now what I can do is I can take my net income, 741. Let's do that in parentheses, 741 divided by my 544 that I started with plus my 30 minus my four. Get a dollar 30 EPS. I forgot to say it, but hopefully you paused the video before working the problem. And if you didn't, I'd pause here before I work the next problem. So the next one is 1913, um, and that one we have, um, we have December 31st, 2017, 2018, this company, Funkin' Noble, had outstanding 820, 820 million common shares, so 820, net income of, oh, and 2 million shares of 8%, $100 par preferred shares. So I got to figure out the preferred dividends because I'm gonna have to take those out. So they had the preferred shares. They had two million shares. These are all apparently dates right now. Two million shares of. 8%, $100 par. So 
Okay. No dividends were declared on either preferred, preferred or common, um, but I still take out the preferred dividends either way. So I need to figure out how much the preferred dividends are. So for that, I need to take the 2 million times 8% times the par value for 16 million. Net income was 426. I guess I already had a preferred dividend spot here, but it's okay. So to find the earnings per share, I'm gonna take the net income minus the preferred dividends, even though they were not paid, divided by common shares I was saying. Now realize if I had any of this stuff going on, if I had buys and sells and those types of things or, or stock dividends, that I would utilize that sell in this bottom number. Since I didn't, this problem didn't have any of that, I didn't have to worry about it. But if I did, I would still put that in my calculation for the bottom number for this one. So that should not be a percentage. Oh, I did something wrong. Oh, I know what. Put some of them in millions and some of them not. That won't do any good, will it? One, two, three, one, two, three. There we go. 50 cents is the earnings per share. Okay, I'm gonna make try to make these videos a little shorter, so I'm gonna stop this video there. Um, and with that, we'll start, we'll get into diluted um, earnings per share on the next video.